and welcome to Let's Talk DevOps, your favorite pit stop for every useful nugget of information from the world of DevOps. Today, please welcome Thomas Goldberger, who's already been here on this show once before. So it's great to have you back with us once again, Thomas. Uh, what do we have uh, on our discussion menu today? I believe um, we continue further from our last episode's topic with Alex, where we talked about team topologies. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Shalash. And it's wonderful to be here again. Um, yeah, in the last video on team topologies um, by Alex, we learned that DevOps is not only about technical excellence, right? Um, we also talked about team topologies and how they influence better collaboration and communication, as well as efficient handoff between teams. Today, I'd like to dive even deeper into the team topology topic. Mm -hmm. um, and for that, I want to start with a little nugget. When we think about complexity of communication between two or three teams, that is something we can handle and streamline rather quickly. But we seldom encounter organizations who has just two or three teams. And each new team, each new moving part will add complexity to the whole system. Okay. And in such a scenario, then what can be the obvious uh, challenges? So um, the idea behind DevOps includes the focus on efficient communication between dev teams and ops teams, right? But if we consider the context of the entire software delivery lifecycle, which we do um, when we talk about DevOps, then there are many teams involved, including business, security, QA, just to name a few. The challenge comes as additional part adds a new layer of complexity in communication and information sharing and handovers. A stakeholder with focus on security will require another set of details and information as compared to a stakeholder based in the QA team. DevOps Topologies provides us with ideas and best practices to scale up and handle this kind of situations. Okay, that sounds exciting. Yeah, uh, and so would you like to help us, uh, you know, our viewers understand this better with an example that we can introduce uh, everyone into these practices? Sure. So as we mentioned, one of the challenging one one of the challenges is about ramping or scaling up. Connecting two teams and align them is not so hard, but Doing the exact same thing on a multi-team level with different agendas or even organization-wide applicable is another piece to tackle. Often a temporary Dev, DevOps enablement team is a good approach to start a transformation. Yeah, and and so does what does a uh, such a complex situation demand in terms of the preparation and the requirements from um, the DevOps team? Um, so the DevOps team will need to bring some special skills to the table. Um, for example, in training and coaching, especially uh, training um, around mindsets, but also united understanding for the big picture um, the organi organization tries to achieve. It makes sense to start small <clears throat> by working when, with one or two teams, but also bring stakeholders and management on board. With a successful transformation, we're, where teams um, also learned the skill of self-organization, working autonomous, the DevOps team will take on the support role rather than the enablement role. And with the backing of the stakeholders and the management, uh, transformation will be continued and the next team will be selected to be enabled. Obviously, this is a lengthy process, but when you try to change the ins and outs of an organization, that is run by humans. There are no shortcuts in changing behaviors and mindsets, right? Yeah, true. And <clears throat> I think you also mentioned that uh, the DevOps enablement team can be temporary. Uh, so what exactly uh, does that mean? And uh, secondly, how does the team know when to move on to the next team or when it, it's done with its work and can be dissolved? Yeah, this is a very good question um, and one we face a lot. 
Um, so let's begin to define temporary. Um, that means a group of people with um, the needed knowledge and skills will form, um, um, let's call it system team, right? In best case scenario, this team um, is not working on the daily business. Um, its daily business would be enabling, en enabling and supporting um, other teams. So that this system team um, starts to work with one or two teams, as we mentioned before, to mature their mindset and DevOps workflows. Um, after the team hit their goals, the system team will start to work with other teams, with the new selected teams. The role of the system teams shifts into a support role um, for the first two teams and an enablement team uh, for the new teams. Um, at some point in time, the critical mass of the organization has transformed and can push the transformation by its own. This might be the point where the system team can be dissolved. So to find the maturity of a team, one possibility, which is very classic, uh, which is a very classic solution in software development, is deciding on definitions of done. The definition of done will be based on at least four measurable DevOps key matrices. Important here is to decide per team what will be measured since every team has its own level of maturity, its own level of workflows and, and all that. Obviously, this is something that takes months or even years depending on the organization size, but it's well worth it since yeah. it will guarantee better quality in the product, a better quality in the delivery system, overall more flexibility, but it's also improves and this is an important one, um, the satisfaction rate in the work environment. So people are happier to work in those kinds of environments. Absolutely, yeah. And that really sounds like a great practice. So, uh, and do you have more information and details around this? Uh, yes, um, it's always possible to get in touch with us uh, to talk about changes you want to do in the organization. Um, we also provide a 360-degree assessment um, where we are able to get a good understanding uh, where you stand as a team, as an organization, and with that we find a way to help you and find the areas where you need the most improvement. Great. That's great to know. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your time, Thomas. It was wonderful to have you and really appreciate your expert inputs as always. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, glad to be back and hope it, was, it wasn't the last time. Oh, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> and to our dear viewers, uh, if you would like to know more, you must check out our blog post on this topic as well. Uh, you can find its link at the end of this episode. And this blog talks about uh, DevOps topologies and how they are used to impact changes in an organization. So that's it for now. Until next time. Keep having fun and of course, keep talking DevOps.